Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service this morning. This morning, uh, we'll be praying and we'll be hearing God's word. And we have Joanne sharing reflection with us, too. Plus, there'll be updates on various things. And we'll be sharing some messages from some members of our church family as well. And we'll finally be, go be sharing a, our Going Deeper video for this week. And believe it or not, it's four weeks since we recommended our book of the month. And we'll be recommending a new book of the month uh, today as well. But as we begin our service this morning, let's commit our time together with a prayer of adoration on the screen. Let's say the, this prayer together. I bow down before you, Father who made me. I bow down before you, Son who saved me. I bow down before you, Spirit who guides me. In love and adoration, I give my lips, I give my heart, I give my mind, I give my strength. I bow down before you, sacred three, the ever one, the Trinity. Amen. And let's continue uh, now, as we continue now, let's join in with a song celebrating our God, this amazing grace. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free sing for all that you've done for me who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of all
O Lord Jesus Christ, said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. But you'll know, and I certainly know, that we fail to keep these commandments, don't we? Week in, week out, all of us fail to keep these commandments. And because of this, we need to rep help repair our relationship with God by asking him with sincere hearts to forgive us our sins. So just before we make our confession, let's spend a few moments now remembering before God those times when we've upset him. Those times we've upset others, whether it's on purpose or by accident. And then after that, we'll make our confession. But let's spend a few moments now in quiet before God. Let's say these words together then. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you our God. Amen. And having made our confession, if you said these words and meant them with all your heart, may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins. He'll strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect this, the special prayer for this Sunday. Faithful creator, whose mercy never fails, deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, over the last few weeks, we've been sharing some messages and some pictures of people from our church family. I know that you've been enjoying seeing one another. And we have a few more messages this week as well. And the first one is from Jeanette, uh, who, uh, as you know, moved down to uh, Pastures New uh, at, at the end of last year. But Jeanette sent me an email last week. Uh, Jeanette and her family are settling in well. Uh, down in, in Chester Diocese and she's settling well into a new church as well and Jeanette says this we're all well here our children and the husbands and partners are, are, are looking for uh, are working for the NHS and education but they're all in good health thank God uh, I've been warmly accepted as part of our ministry team here and I've been developing a pastoral ministry during the lockdown which I hope will increase uh, with time the leadership team have been very welcoming and encouraging uh, and I'll be joining our rector for an outdoor service this Thursday with just six members of, of two parishes in his garden. Also, I prefer, pre prepare a, an e-homily regularly as part of my ministry, sending lots of love to all at Christchurch Walshaw. God bless, Jeanette. So it's really nice to hear from Jeanette. And we also have a couple of video messages. Uh, with The first one's from Stuart and then Norman. And Stuart, in his video, is demonstrating that the lockdown has not done no damage at all to his sense of humour. Here's Stuart and Norman. Yes, uh, oh, it'd be great to see everyone. I uh, miss Neville, a, a special music group. Apart from Shirley, who uh, doesn't <laughs> like me apparently. But, uh, Josh has given his book, How to Be a Christian, which I'm, I'm, I'm learning. And a couple of notes I've made here. Eric owes me 50 quid. <laughs> and Mavis, can you give me car back? <laughs> I really need that baby, don't you? But apart from that, I'm missing all of you. Love you. Bye bye. Hello. Well, I'm out walking today and it's a really pleasant day and uh, we've missed you all at church but we're looking forward to uh, getting back there as soon as possible to, to meet up with everybody. So stay safe and we'll see you soon. Thank you Stuart and Norma for those messages and if you'd like to share a message with uh, members of the church family either by email uh, or uh, by video, certainly by video, just come round to our house 
and uh, I'll do a quick 30 second video of you to share with the church family. I know people will be really pleased. You may not think that it will make a difference to people if they see you on the screen on a Sunday morning, but it really is making a difference to people. So do bob round and I'll do a little video clip of you. Or if you like, just send an e email and I'll read out your message to the church family. Uh, that, that, that would be really good. So as we continue now, Steph's going to read to us from the Bible. Hi everyone, um, the reading this morning is taken from Matthew, um, uh, Matthew chapter 10 starting at verse 24 through to verse 39. So, um, the student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for students to be like their teachers, and servants like their masters. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household so don't be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Thank you for that, Steph. And uh, Joanne's going to share a reflection with us now on that passage from the Bible. Good morning, everyone. It's lovely to be with you again today and to be able to share God's message with you. So let's start with a prayer. Open our ears, O Lord, to hear your word and to know your voice. Speak to our hearts and strengthen our wills, that we may serve you now and always. Amen. So our reading today was from Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 to 39. At the beginning of this chapter, Jesus sends out his disciples to proclaim the gospel in his name, to speak the words they have heard him speak. He tells them in verse 27, what is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. We know that as followers of Jesus, this is also our mission, but we also know that it will not be easy. Jesus says, it is enough for the student to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. As Jesus is our teacher and master, we must expect that we, like him, will experience difficulty and opposition. When we do God's will, however, we are also told in this passage that we don't need to be afraid. We are assured of his love. He knows when a sparrow falls and we are worth more to him than many sparrows. He knows the number of hairs on our heads. We can therefore be strengthened knowing that he will watch over our lives. We are also assured of Jesus' commitment to us. If we share him with others, he will speak up for us before God. He tells us in verse 33, Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. As well as experiencing opposition, Jesus goes on to talk about the further cost that discipleship can bring. In verse 34, he tells us, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. This sword is designed to divide our loyalties 
so that we need to choose between the temptations of this life and our commitment to him. This includes our love for our families. This is not because Jesus doesn't want us to have family relationships, but he is warning us that they must not get in the way of our love for him and his calling for our lives. We therefore need to put to one side all those things in our life which distract us from God. As well as family, this could include work, friends, possessions and hobbies. This is not easy. We are being asked to put aside the things that we enjoy. But on this Father's Day, we remember that God is the most loving of fathers. He doesn't tell us what we want to hear, but what will enable us to achieve eternity with him. He asks us to give up the distractions of this world so that we are able to find his kingdom. He tells us in verse 39, whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And as in so many things, Jesus has shown us the way. He left his earthly family and livelihood, took up his cross and willingly offered up his life for ours. So let us respond to this by following his ways in all that we think, do and say. And so let us pray. Eternal Father, I know that following you will not always be easy. I know it takes commitment and perseverance. I pray now that I will take up my cross and follow you. I will carry my burdens. I will follow even when it's hard. I know that work for the kingdom of God is worth it. Amen. Thank you very much for that, Joanne. And uh, as we continue now, let's declare our faith in God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Let's say these words together, the words on the screen. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to continue in prayer now, and, and this week you'll have seen it on your news and, and read it in your newspapers. Uh, there's been so much about children living in poverty. Families dependent on free school meals have been in the news all week pretty well. Uh, there's around 1.3 million children in England who are eligible for free school meals. And a survey by the Food Foundation in May said that more than 200,000 children have had to skip meals because the family couldn't access enough food during the lockdown. And the reasons for this are numerous uh, because of various circumstances, too numerous to mention. But with all this information in mind, remembering all those who have very little, let's pray. Father God, you care about those who are poor, those who are vulnerable, those who are struggling and those in need. So we remember before you, Father, those who are in difficult circumstances today, those who are living in inadequate housing, those who are homeless, those who have escaped domestic violence and are living in refuges. We remember before you, Father God, those who have not got enough to eat, those who will go to bed hungry this week, those who are worried about how they'll feed the family. We remember before you, Father God, those who are in abusive relationships, those who are in broken families, those who have no one who loves them in their lives. Remember before you, Father God, those who are unemployed, those who are self-employed, but who've been unable to work, those who are learning in this present time that their jobs are going to be taken away from them. We remember before you, Father God, those who are poorly, those who are dying, and those who are grieving. Father God, you care about all these people, so we ask you to help them. Provide them with your comfort, strength and protection. Pro provide healing 
in their lives, Lord. Make yourself known to them. Pour out your love, grace and mercy on them. And reveal your Son to those who don't know him yet. And finally, Father God, you care about us. You care about those to whom you've given so much. Those with positions of power and responsibility. Those you've commanded to love one another and share what we have. Help us, Father God, to be the body of Christ. Help us to feed the hungry. Help us to speak out for justice. Help us to be the people that you want us to be. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we might not disappoint you. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And this coming Thursday, it will be International Day of the Seafarer. So let's take a moment now to pray for those who take big risks and sacrifice so much to ensure that as an island nation, we receive approximately 90% of our imports from around the world. So let's pray now. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who sacrifice their home and family life to work as seafarers. We think of the many months at sea, and during the hardships and dangers of heavy seas, storms and strong winds far away from home. Look with favour on all seafarers who miss their families and loved ones. Comfort those who feel isolated or lonely, scared or insecure. Bring them safely home to shore and at the end of their contract, return them into the loving arms of their family and friends. We ask this in the, in our, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let's continue our prayers now with the Lord's Prayer, the traditional version. Let's say these words together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Just want to share a few notices with you now. And yet again, thank you so much to all of you who gave to Porch Boxes this week. Um, each time we go to Porch Boxes, to the depot, your gifts are so gratefully received. And I would encourage you to carry on giving. You can do that by bringing your items down to our house, 37 Gisborne Drive in Walshaw, and we'll take them down to the depot. On, we, we, we go very early on a Wednesday morning. Uh, I'm sure that you'll all know the items which are normally needed, but just to let you know that tins of tomatoes, tins of red kidney beans, pulses and cooking oil are really in need, in need at the moment. So if you can bear that in mind when you put your items together, that would be really great, thank you. Also, as I said at the beginning of the service, uh, our video of the week uh, this week is Philip Yancey. Uh, and it's a video in an interview that he did at Holy Trinity Brompton in London. Uh, an interview with Nicky Gumbel uh, entitled Why Grace and this week um, during the interview uh, there's lots of humorous stories uh, it's very informal uh, and uh, it's very humorous as well Philip Yancey talks about the grace of God what it is as well as how we should show or share the grace of God with others the interview which is about 30 minutes long uh, is from 2014 and for those of you that don't know, Philip Yancey is a Christian journalist and writer. His books have sold over 15 million copies in English. He regularly speaks at Christian festivals and conferences here in the United Kingdom. And uh, former United States President Jimmy Carter, who himself is a Christian, said this about him. He said, he's my favourite modern author. And I know so many people hold Philip Yancey in, in high esteem. So grab yourself a coffee at some point, not immediately. Uh, but in a few minutes, grab yourself a coffee and watch this video on YouTube by searching Philip Yancey, What Grace, and the YouTube link is also on screen as well. Also, as I say, it's a month now since uh, we recommended, Steph recommended Pete Gregg's book, How to Pray. And uh, this month, our book of the month is a book by Philip Yancey. Uh, it, and it's not a new book. I first read it in 1998 and some of you might have already read it, but it's likely... Uh, the case that many of you haven't as well and I intend to read it again because it, I was reminded by this interview what an impact this book had on me when I first read the book which is called 
what's so amazing about grace. Uh, in the interview, Nicky Gumbel uh, called it a life changing book. So if you aren't sure what the grace of God is, and we talk about it so much, don't we, and pray about the grace of God so much. But if you're not sure what the grace of God is, then this book is for you. If you aren't sure that God loves you, this book is for you. If you don't know how you benefit from God's extravagant grace, then this book is for you. And if you aren't too sure what God's grace looks like, get a hold of a copy of this book and have a read. You can buy the book on Amazon for as little as £4.99 paperback, but it's also available from other bookshops too. You might even pick up a copy of it uh, secondhand from eBay or somewhere, somewhere else. Uh, just to continue, uh, thanks to those of you that were able to get back to me last week during the week about the opening up of prayer. And a special thanks to those of you who have volunteered to help help out with opening up and, looking at, uh, and locking up the church as well as uh, cleaning. At this moment in time, we're aiming to have the church building open for private prayer uh, from Sunday the 5th of July. Though this is dependent on the appropriate materials for hygiene and cleaning being delivered to us. Of course, uh, there are lots of other factors in play at the moment. This is a very uncertain time, but we'll keep you updated on where things are up to by email and through these services as well. So watch this space on Open Our Church up for a private prayer. And I'd really encourage you, while our church building isn't open, for private prayer please do continue to pray at home for one another for our community and for the world uh, in a moment uh, our service will end with amazing grace and we only sang, sang it a couple of weeks ago i know that but this morning it's been sung by 50 believers from 50 countries around the world um, which have been affected by the coronavirus and for me it really creates a picture of what heaven's going to be like with people from every nation, tribe and language praising God together. And you might want to listen to it, you might want to join in. Uh, and I'd really encourage you to see it through to the end because I don't want you to miss the message at the very end of, as well. But first of all, a final prayer and blessing. In fact, let, let's pray for one another now with the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So here it is. Amazing grace. God bless you. Thank you.
So much has changed in our world lately. Wo auch immer du bist, ruf seinen Namen an. Jesus. 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 Jesus.